Hey, how's it going? That's all good now. Wait, wait. Since when? Since when does Bernie Sanders stream? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, not. I don't think I have that yet. Um, let's see here. I think it's that one. I want right. Okay, so before we actually do anything else, we gotta watch this chat. We gotta watch this new video that just dropped. This this channel's great. It's, it's wavy, man. It's a vibe. I love the fact that like a lot of up-and-coming brands can connect with established brands and then um, sell products and pay their phone bill. Okay, what about the culture? Love the culture. The culture is the culture. The culture runs the world right now. I feel like you are the culture. In some ways, but being humble is also extremely the move right now. It's bit me in the ass previously when I haven't been as humble, so I'm going to just humble it for the rest of my life now. How? People get um, intimidated by confidence and success, so help people and be humble. And then. Wait, what? When when do people get intimidated by that? I mean, doesn't everyone want to be like successful and stuff? You'll survive this crazy world that is life. Right. I love I, I love the awkward silence. If you only get interviewed by a, a wavy production crew like yourself, you lot create a lot of awkward silences, so it exposes the real personality of individuals. I love that shit. <laughs> it's fucking wavy. Woo! Lamborghini lifestyle, baby. Money talk, baby. The homie Kanye just left. You know what it is with Drake. That's Aubrey to me. I'm on some Lamborghini shit. Lamborghini bitch. With the Lamborghini doors on a green, green whip. <laughs> Nice. People say we wouldn't be shit. You ever seen a Lambo bought with twenty dollars in reparations? Oh, who ruled Lamborghini, baby? Goddamn, ba. What? <laughs> say goddamn, ba. Goddamn, ba. Goddamn, ba. In line long, ba. <laughs> shit, ba. I right, went inside, right? God ain't got me awful out of that, uh, that right there, right? Okay, got that on, right? Uh, and I put that on top of the, uh, yeah. So I was in there showing them all my spectacular drip. My man said, call my sailor device. So, bam, hello, say less. So, you know, got the wristband for my mans. And this guy is that, awesome. Uh, took that there, uh, put it on my man. Right here, uh, no man left behind. You feel me? Let go. My boy's a real one, bro. Goddamn, bye. It's a fellow friend of yours? I said trapper, that's not my friend. Trappers are not friends, they are associates and business partners. Okay, and sometimes co-defendants, but it's not if you're doing it right. Friends go funny, a trapper, he bought that money. <laughs> Goddamn, boy, shit. What are you gonna do when you get back inside? Give me some food and give it to you. Cause you look hungry. <laughs> Got down, boy. Got down, boy. I'm making him seasick. Watch out. Waves on deck. Wave check. Take your hat off. Let me see. No, he's being awesome. He's he's rap. He's being an awesome rapper. Like, why would he? Why would he have a stroke when he's rapping? See your waves. He ain't got none. <laughs> Wave check. You hear that? That's the shore. That's like white noise right there, like, shh. But that's the ASR, whatever that shit is, that acronym, y'all know what it is. I don't want to watch it. Okay, so hat is fresh, New York, a visor, LA, shirt, bargain bin. Uh, these are like 10 years old from South Florida, and these are from LA. Like, Your whole shit's dripped out. Thanks, bro. Uh, my name is Survivor this, Man. This is just crazy to me. Like, who, who dresses like this? I mean, I probably would, like, wear these, like, individually, especially the Fez. The Fez is pretty cool.
It's spelled like server, S-E-R-V-I-V-E-R, -E uh, an Anon artist that's doing some NFT stuff. What's the most you ever made off an NFT? Uh, I, have a, I have a V friend that I bought on the first day, so that's worth like 10. The Fez is cool, yes. How much money is that? Like $40,000. What the heck is an NFT? Forty thousand so dollars. So an NFT is what? a non-fungible token, and it's basically a fancy word for digital art. And digital art is changing now. <laughs> My man just called NFTs digital art. No, they're not. Like, it, I don't know why, but like every single NFT is like ugly. It it just reminds me. Yeah, that's also true. Every NFT I've seen is either like either ugly or like not worth it. And it's it reminds me a lot of the the equivalent of uh, Beanie Babies. Everyone thinks that they're worth so much money. I swear, it I swear I'll get money from it, right? because you can actually own it and it's all about being written onto the blockchain and so now digital art can live on permanently forever i got a homie who sort of uh, did pick million dollars i swear to god really i swear to god bro last week the homie hit for like a mil sum on a dick pick nft i don't know like the exact details of <laughs> why is he selling dick pics for a million dollars He's selling dick pics for a million dollars. And yes, the the NFT comparison is true. I'm not the first one to say that. My man is selling dick pics for a million dollars. Well, I guess I'm doing things wrong then. Who he sent it or whatever, but yeah, he got a million dollars for a dick pic NFT. Who purchased the NFT? Just, I, don't, I don't know, anonymous, you know what I mean? Maybe it is. I don't know, he, maybe, he probably do know. For a million dollars, you gotta know who sold it, you know what I mean? NFTs and Gary V counting cheese. Yeah, you got Good afternoon, it. ladies and gentlemen. You're watching Channel 5 Action News. We're here right now live at the Complex Con in Long Beach, California. We're going to talk to some artists, influencers, leaders, followers, networkers, marketers, rappers, fashion designers, fashion purchasers, producers, engineers, to figure out what the hell's going on and what's so complex about this con. Come on, guys. Let's go. I was on No Jumper for fucking 500 guys. No, 50 guys in one night. 500 total in my lifetime. Yeah. So for those who don't know, can you tell us your name and what you're doing out here? Hi, my name is Kazumi, and I am trying to pay rent um, by advertising my own fans. Um, you know, if you're comfortable <laughs> selling your assets, just like everything else, if you have Why those assets, sell them. Why do you bleep only fans? I used to have this slave in college that would, like, let me put stuff in his dick hole. <laughs> How much did he pay you? Um, it was 300 at the time, but it was more of like an experience. So I just felt like this is my calling during COVID. You should do it. You should try it. Defense? Yeah, you probably look good. Okay, maybe. <laughs> $300. She's trying to get him to do weird stuff with his dick. <laughs> I mean, whatever makes Andrew happy, I guess. Naked? What if you did that but naked? If I interviewed people butt naked? Yeah. That could be kinky. But only for Patreon. I'll subscribe. <laughs> True. Yeah. Honestly, why can't let's go? True, I want to sign up. <laughs> hey, yo, Channel 5. I'm over here at Complex Con. I'm barely alive. Trying to strive and prosper like ASAP. Where that AIDS at? I'm doing No Not November right now, though. I was watching um, uh, breastfeeding November. videos on YouTube. What? That's how bad it's gotten. How come you're doing No Not November? It's a it's a big time suck, you know, cause like you're trying to figure out what. Oh no, he's no fab. Oh no, that's not cool. What a weirdo. Anyone who does like no fab and like especially not November is just a psycho. Video to watch, and then four hours later, a <laughs> hundred tabs open. You're like, all right. I used to be really strong with that shit. I used to only jerk off like once a week, but somewhere along the way, I kind of started slipping. I remember back in the day when I was at my horniest, I, I left like Friday night church service, like the middle of worship. I went to the um, bathroom and just fucking, you know, just sprayed that whole toilet seat down. <laughs> my name is Tevin Bailey. Todd it Bailey, shouldn't be laughing, Bailey but... Twins. 
Are we taking over? I mean, yeah, we are. We're close to the cloud. We're so. gonna catch up at this point. Oh, what's the biggest difference between y'all? Taste and females. I'm more on the thicker side, I would say. And he's more on the petite or slim thick. You know? No, I, hey, I'm like, throw it back. I'll, I, I've seen him. Both are good. Right, I'll catch you. <laughs> 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 what's up, dude? What's good, G? How are you doing? This is my twin tavern right here, right? All right. See, well, I was just finished this one over here since he just left me over there, guys. But uh, yeah, any other questions you got? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, mad gummies. What are we talking uh, about over here? What? Oh, man. Stay in your interview. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, stay in your interview. Stay in your interview. Whoa, whoa. Okay, I'll talk. All right, anyway, so I don't know who's doing it. What do you want to talk about? But anyway, I was saying, so we came to the I love how big of a mess this interview is. I'm going to get the high tops tomorrow. Them sleeves is even crazier. The ones with the teeth, right? Four eyes, teeth, nose. Oh. I don't actually know what you're talking about, but I what yo no no what where is it this right where here is I'm it? aware and now I'm 25 and I where is it four eyes who would wear something like this it's so no that is so gross yeah if i see someone wearing these shoes i am getting out of that room like crazy fast no, thank you. Teeth, uh, nose. I don't actually know what you're talking about, but I hope you get the high tops. This tomorrow. right here, I would wear. And now I'm 25, and I would still wear this. That's creativity. When I first saw it, my childhood came back to me, you know? So I'm a kid again. You can call no, it whatever you want, want man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> what does it mean to drip? This right here? You see it? What is drip? The work uniform, right? But would you wear these to work? Or the way I, the whole style, the whole, this, the vibe of it all, would you show it to work? I mean, their like drip this? is pretty good, though. You work at 7-Eleven? I don't. I'm a model actor, creative, with my twin right here. What's up, Doc? What's up? I don't know, you just seem like you got a lot of information and knowledge. Nah, I got a few things. I can tell you this. Everything that's going on, both politically, globally, is all planned. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Have a good one, oh. right, Thank you. My wife. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh -oh. Can you tell us about your face mask? She got it for me, and, uh... I, I do like his mask. His mask is great. Where do I get it? I like it. I, I, I like it a lot. I got two masks today, but uh, this one's my, this one's getting more. Uh... The men like it more than the girls do. Why'd you get that for him? Why not? <laughs> Was it sort of like, you're not really Hell doing yeah, this enough? Brother. Like, it's all about I'm gonna China. I'm going to get this for you so that every time you see yourself in the mirror, you're like thinking about the fact that you need to do that more often? No, I'm like, he's so good at it. I'm like, I want everyone to like, try it. Like go, like I said, baby, go. Get it what? Like having girls sit on his face. You know, I just, I, 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 I give it TLC, you know, that tender love and care. Do you apply that elsewhere in your life? Like, do you have a business or like a passion? No business, uh, passion. Yeah, no, I'd say that's my passion. Yeah, that's good. I'd always say, sit on my, come sit on my face, baby. I see you also have an interesting shirt. Yeah. Who's that? Who's that? This is uh, this is from this is some Russian lady. Yeah, she paints water, like erotic yeah. watercolors. What's up? Sit on my face. How do you feel? What the fuck is up? Sit on my face. How do you feel about eating pussy? What? <laughs> no. No. He seems like he's like from Florida or something. Is such Florida energy. I hope my man gets like a lot of puss. I think that maybe he saw your mask and he thought that, you know, maybe he could, he could be one of the people that. I mean, if he has a pussy, yeah. <laughs> but my passion is pussy, not, or pussy eating, not uh, ass eating or whatever the fuck he has. I don't know. Dude, I respect the fucking shit out of you. What's your name? Nate. Do you have any nicknames? Uh, no. Do you want one? Sure. Nate Doug. Cool. Do you have any money? Yeah. How much? Not a lot. Like, how much are we talking? Like, 150. How much are the Kerwin shoes? I think, like, 180. So you gotta get 30 more bucks? Mm-hmm. What's the plan? Uh, try to get 30 more bucks. Do you have any strategy for that? Uh, not really. What's your cash app? I, I don't have one. I have Venmo, though. What grade are you in? Uh, 12th. You, you almost made it? Mm-hmm. You thinking you're gonna go to college or what? Uh... Wait. Oh no, no, never mind. I thought I'm dumb. I was gonna say that, like, what is? I'm gonna do a gap here. Why is there 12? You gonna go to Europe? No. Thailand? No. You gonna get an apartment in downtown LA and just smoke hella weed? Uh, yeah. Seriously? Awesome. Sure. What's your budget for an apartment? I don't know. Okay, man. Well, you have a bright future. Thank you. Shout out Nate, dog. I'll see you in there, bro.
Yeah, so Silky basically is a part of our brand. Uh, it is basically Andrew wanted to give him some money. That was so they come in like different classic ages? Andrew. Ages, sizes, skin color, different tones, different flavors, uh, different genitals. He, she, they, there, uh, um, uh, because we're also going to be doing ones that are uh, in wheelchairs, small people, we're doing animals, we're doing a whole silky universe. It is actually an emotional companion. It's an emotional spirit. It's there to actually uplift your emotional intelligence. Yeah, yeah, really and truly. We're making history and her story. Seems like a good guy. Nice. So uh, what's going on right here? We got a rainbow. We got a creature. You want to sit down, son? Back here, back here, back here. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling really loved right here. Well, you are very loved right here. <laughs> would I get one? <laughs> yeah, Yo, maybe. Would you get in a creature suit if I have a whole creature suit? Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> I got <laughs> He's gonna go around interviewing people in this in this suit. Oh man, I I am so glad that he did. That he got into this suit. Too much fucking shit about <laughs> I'm a silky now. You're a silky? <laughs> yes. You're just a blue monster, that's what you are. I'm here to hey. fuck silkies. <laughs> hey man, monsters need I love have an too. Inquiry. When you use the bathroom. Are your bowels blue? Nah. Well. What's up, what's your name? Kevin Bradford. Uh, what are you doing here today? I'm promoting Father Steve. Okay, what's he do? We're, we're selling loot boxes. We have mice. We, we have- Loot boxes? The trading card game. We have, we have, every, we have everything here. I, I saw like, like this weird stand with like dinosaurs with like butterflies on it. I thought it was kind of weird, but uh, I didn't think it was bad. I just thought it was weird. I absolutely love it here. Seeing all the brands, uh, taking pictures with people, uh, pr promoting myself too. Sounds like you're uh, you're going up. Your cloud's going up. Um, I actually uh, was on a documentary uh, called Tallest Teens. And, uh, Wait, what? I'm seven foot two. I'm the Guinness World Record holder for tallest teenager. Oh my god, this guy is massive. Oh wait, I think I actually know who this is. Now that I think about it, I think I've seen. Is it? Is it high? I don't, cause I don't know, cause like, I remember, like, is he from Toronto or something? I thought he was from like Toronto or Montreal. Succeed. What if your dream of slam dunking as a pro? I do believe that I have the potential to be in the NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this could be over if you continue to grow. I actually have. I remember. I remember design. watching this. Yeah, I saw the basketball court, but uh, I'm trying to stay as far away from that as possible. That's just not my. Uh, that's not my style. But did you know if you like make the basket, like you'll make like 20k. 20k. It's really thinking about it now. Uh, I'm feeling kind of nervous. <laughs> I believe in you, bro. I think, you, I think you're gonna do great. I don't know. I'm wearing a suit, so I can't really extend my arms that far, so I don't know. Bro, you are super tall. I don't think that would matter. Does he make it? No! Nope. <laughs> Thank you! They gave me toilet paper to wipe my ass. Yo, so, uh, <laughs> this nice Ferris Hill. Ferris wheel uh, cannot be ridden by nobody. The old man will not let me ride it, nor anybody. It's just for show. They have a Ferris wheel, but it's not functional. That's not cool. Hey, what are you in line for right now? In line? I believe Mac DeMarco. The Mac DeMarco is performing in this cardboard castle? I don't have no idea. That's what I was told, so that's what I'm doing. What if he's not? Then uh, we'll see what happens, honestly. What was your yeah. name? I'm Joe. You drove out here for this? Yeah, pretty much. Me and me and the homie did. Oh, nice. Oh, man. How you doing in school right now? I was doing pretty solid in class, and then after the switch to online, I feel like it's just harder and different. You're not cheating? I mean... The normal amount, like on homework. 
I mean, I'm sure everyone did cheat on homework. Let's get out and see what we find. I've been doing this for about like, I don't know, 12 years now. So I feel a bit old. I feel a bit like an uncle now, you know what I'm saying? Feels good. It's also a bit depressing. I'm a lot older than I used to be. But also younger than I will be soon. That's why I love Maximus. He's so philosophical. <laughs> it's crazy. Love is like, like the flower. Okay, yeah, that was a good one again. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of sad. Let it go. Let it go. I'm sure everyone can to a certain point. It's not the vibe. Hey, what's up, Kerwin? Pretty good, pretty good. I'm sorry about earlier. How you doing though? I'm, I'm actually doing great. I found this job on Craigslist. Keep it 100 with you. Uh, I'm not Kerwin Frost, as you can see, uh, but I'm grateful for the opportunity. This suit is hot as fuck. Jesus walked on water so I could drip on you niggas. Hey, you gotta watch on water. Oh, drip, pussy nigga. Whoa. Uh. Okay. It's just uh. We're leaders. I don't know. I don't know. Sure. Company called Fuck You Want right now. Me and my brother started that. We we're about to get sent to Virginia. We we're about to get sent to the Navy. You feel me? And when I was out there, we started about the company. Now we're a million dollar company. I'm doing that shit. I don't give a fuck about the cloud. Everything we're doing, I'm living it, and that's it. Hey yo, have you seen his hair design everywhere? Have you seen it on the internet though? His hair is awesome. Ask everybody where they got that shit from. Tell me where it started. They're gonna look at me. You heard? I like the hair. The hair looks sick. Oh, thank you, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it. It used to be purple. Okay, that's hard. Oh, where'd you get the idea for it? For the hair? Um, I don't, it was just Halloween. So, yeah, we met some dude who said he invented the spider web. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I had a TikTok that blew up about my hair, and he's like, oh, this kid's a pussy. No way. I was like, I, I don't know, he's hard. They don't own that shit, but, yeah, no, it's hard. My friend called me the albino Dennis Rodman. <laughs> <laughs> Can you ball? Uh, not really. I'm working on a basketball court in uh, St. Louis. Oh, for real? Oh, I love basketball. That's a sick shirt. Where'd you uh, Where'd you get it from? My friend Austin. Ass Pizza. Ass Pizza? Yo, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ass Pizza. Uh, he's dope. The brand name is Ass Pizza. I think like he just fucking just put it together some shit like that, right? So. Do you like Ass Pizza? Mm-hmm. Can you give him a shout out? Shout out Ass Pizza. Who's Ass Pizza? I don't know. You just heard of him. Ass pizza. Your energy getting mad. I just finished eating. About to get some hair relaxed. He took a trip to the woods near the farm. Where I'm humping my chick outside. Getting mosquito bits on my arm. My name is Austin. People know me as Ass Pizza. Uh, I make clothes. Why do they call you Ass Pizza? That's just uh, my Instagram name that I have for a long time, and now I'm just stuck with it for life. I don't like to associate it with pizza. It does kind of sound good. You don't like pizza? Yeah, it's true. Pizza's yeah. delicious. Do you like ass? Yeah, I love us. I mean, I mean, both are good, so... Can you tell us about your, your face tattoo? <laughs> you know, one day I just said, fuck it, man, I'm gonna get the face tattoo. I didn't really think about it. I was at a point where I was just like, fuck it, man, you know? And it just, like, didn't feel part of this world, so I was like, I'll just get a face tattoo, you know? He does have and some I pretty nice... Mom, he does have some pretty nice tattoos. Like, I do like this one underneath his eye. Um, that it was temporary. The craziest thing I ever done was not pull out. Do you have a child? I'm about to. Woo! Congratulations. That's hard, bro. I go by Holy Barber. If anybody wants to follow me on Instagram. Yeah, it's like I wouldn't tell anyone to go get a fucking face that, you know? It's just like, I feel like nowadays, like, you could still get a job and shit, you know? Like, I feel like no one actually really fucking cares about it, so. Yeah, the stigma to around tattoos just doesn't really make sense to me. It never has. Like, if you have a tattoo, like, I think that's, like, a very interesting and brave uh, thing to do. All right, yeah. The stigma is I unwarranted. I'm something later, but uh, it's fine. What's going on? Just this guy talking shit, man. You know, I deal with haters every day, but it just... Fuck it. I understand, bro, you know? I know that I started a lot of this shit, you know? But I'm just a humble, nice guy, you know? I really don't give a fuck about it.
like to know the backstory for the tattoos. I, I would too, because every tattoo definitely has some form of backstory. Uh, there was this one video that I watched not too long ago. This guy went over, like, he went to, I think, oh, where was it? I think it was Argentina. And he got, like, some tattoos. And then they found, uh, the other people that he was with found out they had more, uh, like, other tattoos. And he gave a rundown for a lot of his other t different tattoos. And, like, he uh, he got one for his brother that had died in a car crash or something like that but yeah no like tattoos are i actually think tattoos are pretty hot though not gonna lie of kids here that are just sort of like willing to sacrifice themselves and everyone around them to get close to people like you how does that make you feel it's just like you know once you get here man it's like that's it you know it's not what you think man you know i just like cool shit man and it's like i feel like i know what's cool, i don't think you know? so and it's like what i want to see me and my friends you know i'm very grateful to have all my friends who also like you know are on the same wavelength you know like I fuck with real shit, but I feel like everything is just so fake and like generic and like they're just trying to market this shit to like, you know, I don't know, just some fake bullshit, man. I fuck with Kerwin shit and Steve shit, you know, everything else. They're trying to make a quick buck. I like you know? their fits. At what point do you think a brand goes from being like authentic and cool to like corny? Like, what is that turnover point? It all just comes when like you stop thinking about like what you want to bring into the world instead of like, oh, what's going to make the money, you know? If you're like making sick shit, like the money's gonna come no matter what. So it's like you can't stress over it, you know? I don't know. I just feel like people try way too hard and they just want fast shit. They're not thinking long term, you know? They're like, oh, what's popping now? Let's copy this guy and then sell this. Blah, blah, blah. It'll run you straight to the ground, man. What's the reason for getting one? Um. I mean, like I said, I think tattoos are pretty cool. Plus, it would, it would more or less be like, for me, it would be more or less like a sentimental thing that I would consider getting one. And just like little reminders for, because like I've dealt with like really bad depression before and it would just, you know, I would have something as a little reminder to just keep on pushing. Has anybody ever offered you like a major brand deal, like a Zoomies mall style thing? Yeah, there was a, you know, a lot of shoe brands wanting to work with me and shit. It's just like, first of all, there's always one person who's scared and nervous and doesn't understand it. So I can't fully do what I want. I don't know. They just complicate shit trying to work with people. And what I really want to show to kids is that like, you don't need anyone to help you really like. It's interesting what you said about like longevity, right? Like, no matter what you do, someone's gonna imitate you. If you come out with something authentic, there's gonna be people who make actually successful companies, successful media companies, successful clothing companies, copying your exact style. Yeah, I see, I see a lot of people copying me, you know, I just keep my mouth shut, because it's like, that's my goal. I'm really trying to just inspire people, so fuck it, it's gonna happen, you know? And it's like, once you start calling people out, you just look like a loser, so. I know my influence, so I'm gonna just keep going and just like, you know, yeah. I must be on some and that's shit, why so I don't like people that just get them so, out of you know, willy nilly. People are gonna copy you, you know? They're on some loser shit. But the stories are also pretty good too. I, it, bro. I know who's copying you. They're trying to exploit New York. Fuck them, bro. Fuck them. What are you talking about? I mean, yeah, he is you know spitting facts. About, we don't even gotta say their name. How did you react when you first saw someone just copying your shit? You know, it's cool. It's cool. We're influencers, man. <laughs> We're influencers, bro. <laughs> That's where we get. I mean, they say that imitation is the best form of flattery. And, you know, if a lot of people are copying and shit, I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that he has a lot of people that like him. S Pizza is pretty cool, though. 
feels like the kind of guy I'd probably want to smoke some pot with. Yeah, free shit for man, free sandwiches, right? That's why we get free sandwiches. Lions don't concern themselves with, uh... You gotta wake up and stay hungry like a fucking tiger every day, bro. A army of sheep led by a lion will destroy an army of lions led by a sheep. The leader is the most important thing. That's true. How do you feel about people stealing your haircut style? I don't care. As long as, as long as I do my best, that's what matters. Tommy Wright the third, ten wanted me into the world end. Street smart, delighted like part, devil Don Tom, internet icon. So back in the old music, you talk a lot about the devil and Satan. How many people were like really worshiping the devil associated with Memphis music at that time? It's like a lot. Of, it's not devil worshiping, but it's a lot of evil shit. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of evil spirits, cutthroat city, cutthroat mentality. That's what Memphis is about. How did Memphis change like from that old school style to what it is now? Because if you think about like Memphis new artists, right? Like Push Ice and Ellie Chaba, it's more like Atlanta sound, like modern trap. Like when did the uh, like three six Tommy Wright shit kind of like transition? A little bit after the 2000s. It's kind of when Atlanta started to you know mimic our sound. You know, a lot of shit started to change. And then our city just tried to be more, you know, universal with their sound. You had that crazy peak in the 90s, but it now seems like your, your career is bigger than ever right now. Like, you have more fans than of all time. Amazing. How did that happen? Like, how did you pop off, like, 10 or 15 years after the songs first came out? Let's say what it is, man. Soundtracks and new rappers wanting to sample. Like, your shows in New Orleans is, like, yeah. 150 skaters. I would do it. All that shit, like, moshing. Did you, did you ever imagine when you first made those songs back in the day that that was? Uh, you know, nah, you know how. Damn, Andrew I has lived a that. life, man. But you know what? Gangsta walking is a lot like my shit, and that's what we do. Because we got that same energy, that same shit, that same pushing. We did that shit without a skateboard. <laughs> my name's Guabdad4000. I'm a fan of yours. Oh, hell yeah, we just watched some shit that you did, and OGZ was in it. I was on my ass laughing the whole time. He's queuing on. And you niggas is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And this suit is crazy. Do you wear a bad suit on purpose? Uh, yeah. I figured. Where you get it from? Goodwill. I figured. You gotta watch out for mothballs, man. Mothballs? Mm -hmm. They be doing, they be using them in Goodwill for real. Yeah. Why is it dangerous to have mothballs in your clothes? I said just watch out for. Wait, it, wait, is that true? If so, I gotta be a little bit careful. Going to stores like that. I, if that's true, yikes. Or I didn't necessarily scary. merit any danger. I'm sorry if you felt that from my tone, King. No, I, am I didn't. I being too aggressive? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Damn it, Guam, stop doing that. Huh? Did you cop any cops today? Cops. Um, what did I actually spend money on? Oh, did, I bought some shoes. I like your music. Thank you. I like my music too. I, I mean, like music. you I should like be doing confidence. that for every like new thing of clothing you get. Without the music, I follow your stuff. Thank you. It's it's ill. What's your name, dog? Kosha Dills. Tight. But I'm running a marathon tomorrow. Oh, that's why you got the whole shit going on. Well, is it a purpose? Um, I'm coming off of a, a big run off of rapping with Fat Joe in a rainstorm, and I felt that oh, internet. Oh, nigga, I've been seeing you. <laughs> I've been seeing you. I damn near follow you. Nigga, you still got the umbrella? Yeah. Well, that's kind of weird. <laughs> Check it out. All right. <laughs> Beatbox, rap that umbrella looks like I have to guy. Is, I use five fire. hands on my finger, channel five. Do you know my rap flow? Do you know why I'm holding umbrella? It's me mimicking what happened last week at MSG with Fat Joe. I was rapping in a rainstorm. He's like, hey, bro, can I rap with you? I'm like, okay, dog, but you need an umbrella because you don't want to get real wet. I used to have hair on my head. It was impossible. Back in the day, they fill the microphone with follicles. I do it on the like fast track. Right through the pass track. And other people say, yeah, what's the cash app? So send money now. And don't act so funny now and channel five i hope you guys like my fucking style and if you don't have any money to borrow send a cash app to someone else and i'll see you guys tomorrow cash app the best subject to incorporate oh is he really hitting us with an ad scheme to impress people who went to the complex con last a few months ago uh, use code channel five for a free fifteen dollars for new users. I gotta have, yeah, uh, my AirPods. I'm gonna listen it to was music such I a setup. I mean, it was a good Thank setup you. though. How many miles is the total marathon? Twenty-six point two. Why? Would, so, but you still ain't said why. 
I think I think you need to have certain different kinds of music. Like in the beginning, you don't want to be too no, gassed. Not about up. music. Why is you running for 26 miles, nigga? I, I love. It's I love crazy, running, man. It's like a journey in life. So life much is a marathon. You need 26 miles. <laughs> of it? Yeah, you need more, really. Seems I would, a little bit excessive. Channel Five, love y'all. I haven't seen this man in probably four years. Four years, but old friends. Yeah, been a minute. It was one of those smoother the ones. Out. We we go way back with a guy named pretty Tom smooth transition. Tom Catchinson. Yes. Uh, me and Tom Catchison uh, played on the high school soccer team. As I think, I think he we went to Edison High School together, and and Herbert Hoover Middle School. M me and Tom, uh, we went, we went to a uh, a rock concert. 3-11. Yeah, 3 11. Remember Amber? Amber is the color of your inner dream. The earth isn't flat, but it's hollow. And inside the uh, hollow earth is. How does Andrew find these people? Every single time he manages to find at least one. Every time. And I guess flat earthers are now believing that the earth is hollow? I mean, okay. What won't they believe now, I it's guess? It's like giant octopus. I believe that there's water above and below us, and it's giant octopus. I believe in that shit. How'd you learn about the octopus in the Earth? I was on acid one day, and I thought about it, and I was like, if you watch The Matrix, the robot is He's red-pilled, isn't he? And then I realized that the Earth is more water than anything. How can we get in touch with the octopuses? You just gotta use your third eye and meditate. Oh, oh what? You called it? You called that he would say something about his third eye? I mean... <laughs> I mean, if, if... Yeah, if acid, you know, does that... I mean, yeah, of course. There, there was no shot that he wasn't. I, t I tell everybody, don't get the vaccine. Thank you, USS Wyoming, for the follow. it makes it harder to talk to the octopus? <laughs> Good one. Uh, this is Why would he cut it off? Uh, Andrew. What a, what a guy. All right, let's, learn on, let's move on to educational stuff, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. You know? How much is this? And love. Nice jacket. But we're not looking for deals. Let's keep looking. We're searching for clues. This isn't it. Our mission? Exposing a side of the fashion world that's far from pretty. Have you ever thought about those who actually make your clothes? You will I now. mean, it would probably be better if you were. <laughs> Our journey begins in Newark, New Jersey. One of the busiest ports in the United States. But not everything that arrives here gets in. As we get a little further down, you're going to see a shipment that's suspected that the goods were manufactured by forced labor. Acting port director Edward I mean, Fox takes every us labor is forced. full of blocked imports, foods, blankets, Inplace. and a big one, clothing. So, director, I want to ask you about this shipment that you seized out of Dandong, China. Uh, the allegation is that North Korean citizens were being brought into China, held at the factory. And several of the key elements of forced labor were present. I mean, what's the difference? If, you know, China does it, or realistically, if we do it, like... It, I, I don't understand why they're making a big deal of, if China bondage, does it. I mean, we do it too. Restricted in terms of movement. Their travel documents have been seized. Does that mean that no clothing from that shipment will end up being sold in the U.S.? That's exactly what it means. But they are getting into Canada. Shipping records reveal more than 100 shipments from that same factory over the last decade. And our team is on the hunt for those clothes. Oh, I don't see it. I mean, this is made in yes, but at the same time, you know, you're also providing for yourself and your community to a certain extent. Not the right material though from a mountain of shipping records we find this breakdown of a jacket that came into canada in the spring this one's polyester any luck no nothing will our investigation pay off 
as we search here, we've got an undercover team in China tracking down that very factory near the border with North Korea. For years, thousands... Why don't they just... Why don't they send investigations on, like, some of our shit, too? Like, in, like, the sweatshops and, like, I don't know, fucking Indonesia or some other, or wherever the hell it's they North tend Korean to do it. Percent across the Friendship Bridge. That bridge is now closed, further trapping workers. That Dandong factory is just around the corner. To better understand what might be happening inside, we're at Leiden University, an hour outside of Amsterdam. Professor Remco Breuker is one of the world's leading researchers on North Korea. It's good to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you. What do we know? Okay, so it's most likely going to be the same old, tired talking points about North Korea and none of the, like, the actual like systemic problems that they face especially in the global especially in global affairs know about north korean labor working in china north korea exports its laborers to china they're obedient and they're cheap the perfect kind of worker you'd want in a factory what's in it for north korea to send workers to china i have a very simple answer to that question money from what I've seen from our own research, anywhere between 70 to 100% is taken by the state. Money coming from clothing sales could be funding the North Korean regime. These are... What? Solving a problem we don't need to solve? What do you mean? I mean, yeah, that is none of our business, but we still use some form of uh, slave labor. Considered some of the most dangerous people on the planet who have a nuclear weapons. I mean, that is true, yeah, because we have our own hungry, hungry, dying people here that would easily take up whatever job they can. Program that yeah. is considered extremely dangerous. Is it potentially funding that program? I don't think it is funding that program. And if it isn't funding. By the way, I love that they showed North Korea launching missiles and Kim Jong Un smiling. Funding that program. Um, directly, Great Canadian propaganda, man. Directly by freeing up other funds. It's why the UN Security Council ordered all North Korean laborers be sent back home. Keeping them now would be against international law. How dangerous would it be to try to locate North Korean migrant workers, say, I mean, yeah, that's China. what makes money. Well, although I don't know to what length the Chinese government would go to hide this from the international media. Um, I would expect they would Thanks, go next for the fall. further than um, you and I are comfortable with. Um, so I, I'd be very careful. We will, but we'll be thorough too. Digging through records for months, turning up this Chinese government pitch from 2017 for factories to hire North Koreans. It says North Korean workers will work 12 to 14 hour days. Willing to work long hours at lower cost and that they won't talk back just a few years. Well, I mean, they won't talk back because they don't want to be shipped to back to North Korea where, you know, conditions are infinitely worse than it would be in China for them. I mean, it's the same thing with, like, U.S. and Mexicans, for example, or, like, any other form of immigrant. Like, even here, realistically, especially to, like, our indigenous populations. Years earlier, a government pilot project brings North Korean workers to the very factory we're investigating. Dandong Huayan is actually listed as one of the factories that's participating in this program. So what about now? Back in Dandong, our undercover team approaches the factory carefully. Some female workers emerge, massaging their wrists and shoulders. The work is hard and long. Then suddenly, dozens more appear. This is incredibly rare video, maybe the first time ever seen outside China. So, what? are the workers local or secretly North Korean? Oh my goodness. 
sounds like a bunch of conspiracy theory bullshit. I'm glad we watched, decided to watch this. Our team cautiously asks a local nearby. We've dubbed their exact words to ensure their safety. Next, we talk to these two women spotted wearing the factory logo. I mean, of course they're going to talk bad about, about a factory. They don't own the means of production. We take the findings to Professor Remco. I'd say this is a... What are they trying to do with this? Um, mostly anti-China propaganda and being like, look how good things are over here. And then essentially say, keep going back into the fucking... Yeah, pretty much. It mostly, mostly gaslighting the proletariat. Prime suspects were putting North Beam labors at work in, in their factory. He can't say what conditions are like inside this particular factory, but he has researched the plight of North Korean workers for many years. There are reports of, of people just well, dropping, um, uh, falling down from exhaustion. Working hours are very long, and if deadlines need to be met, they can work for 24 hours. So working conditions, generally speaking, are not very good, but it really depends on the place. I think you can determine that also by asking one very simple question. Um, are they free to leave? And this is the price we're paying, truly, for cheap clothes. No, this is the price they're paying for our cheap clothes. The Dan Dong Wat Yang I mean, is right to a little bit. All this, uh, telling us they don't employ workers illegally and that they have never heard of the past government program to hire North Koreans. You know, we correctly look back on the past and talk in depth about what we can do to address the sins of slavery from the past. As you and I are standing here, I mean, it still happens. 25 million people worldwide are involved in forced labor. As a human being, we have an obligation to do what we can. To... Okay, man. Under realistically any capitalist organization of the economy, everyone is forced into labor that they don't want to do. Even like sock dems know that as well but i doubt that this this guy would know anything about that stop that from happening do you share intelligence with your canadian counterparts we work regularly with cbsa cbsa would know some of the things you know about the use of forced labor absolutely and it's up to the canadians to do with correct that what they will right the Canada Border Services Agency has the power to see shipments made with forced labor, but they admit they've never actually done that, including with the suspect Chinese factory that we've been investigating. Ultimately, they say they rely on companies, the importers themselves, to be responsible for their supply chains, which means those who could profit from forced labor are the ones policing it. I mean, every company profits from forced labor as well as, you know, they technically police it themselves as well. Just exists as cops. So, which of Canada's biggest brands are selling clothes from the Dandong factory? We're about to break the news to these shoppers. Okay, so they're either going to find, like, only a couple items, or, like, nothing. And then they're going to make a big deal of it all care about ethical fashion like cynthia roy who wants to know this where so her clothes fucking liberal. are coming from i want to show you um a blazer that comes from a factory that is suspected of using forced labor this is the blazer yeah what's the brand free labor is always something that a government likes i mean yes but companies like it more though and if a government can't at least take care of its proletariat class, then what's the point of having that government? The government should be there to 
to help and provide necessities that uh, that that everyone needs. And in that context, I think that a lot of governments have failed that in that regard. Penningtons. No way. No way. I buy at Pennington's. I'm not going to buy at Pennington's. Would you keep shopping there? Never. Really? Never. And then there's the She says no, but she will. She, she'll Canadian. she'll go back the next day to Pennington's and buy like probably this exact blouse in stores. Pennington's. Oh, no. Your your mouth dropped there. Yeah. That surprise you? It surprises me and it's so disappointing. It's just unacceptable in my eyes. That company, Pennington's, is actually owned by a really big Canadian brand, Reitman's. Oh, no. You like shopping there. That's where these pants are from. I don't know that I'll be back anytime soon. Hypocrisy is finest. From I mean, yeah. We do, too. But they won't talk to us on camera. In an email, instead, Reitman says they haven't ordered very much from that factory and say that they have a policy against the use of forced labor in their supply chain. But they still probably do have some forced labor in their supply chain, so... Whether it be, like, materials that they have acquired from other places in the Global South or, you know... Other crap like that. Chains. They also say their audits did not identify any forced labor or North Korean workers. But with allegations swirling, Reitman's decides to stop buying from the Dandong supplier. Nine months later, though, what they've already ordered is still for sale in their stores. They tell us that they've now stopped ordering from that factory. But I mean, there is some truth. This is still on the show. And some merit there, though. How is this helping to the workers? But yes, you should be taking when it with skepticism. With them, you have the ability to change something and you stop working with them. It's like you're washing your hands. It's not solving the problem. Can you trust the label? Digging into another Canadian retail giant. Would you like to know who? Sure. Yes. Oh, shoot me now. Who? You ready for it? Do you have a story you think Marketplace should investigate next? Tell us all about it on email, Twitter, and Facebook. This is your Marketplace. In China, a factory suspected of using forced labor. U.S. Customs blocks shipments from here but not Canada. We track their clothes to Canadian store shelves. <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> True. I think I found it. And hear your anger. It's just unacceptable in my eyes. Now our investigation into the true cost of our clothes leads us much closer to home. The fashion district of Los Angeles where these old brick buildings appear abandoned at first glance. But take a closer look. There lies a secret the fashion world would rather keep hidden from us all. The whole garment industry is predominantly in buildings Not like this. They'll have multiple businesses, little factories per floor. So, for example, those are there's one factory here. And one factory there. I mean, I'm not Alex really I, I'm not really surprised that this happens in the States. I imagine it happens here too it's just that we're more willing to brush it underneath the rug and be like oh no and finger wag and be like oh no that's not good as is with the city's non-profit garment workers center he wants people to know the truth behind the made in america label a lot of the times we have that mentality of made in the u.s it's ethical but it comes from places like this where folks are just barely scraping by to survive scrutiny isn't welcome inside these factories but alex wants to expose them hold the door open their cramped quarters hot and humid with little ventilation looks like a problem that we don't care to fix no it's a problem that our government doesn't care to fix because they're making money off of it from things like uh Accepting money from corporations to fund their campaigns or 
lobbying efforts or other stuff like that. And I imagine that the NDP is also kind of guilty of this too, but I'm not entirely sure about that. But I can 100% guarantee that the Liberals and Conservatives are though. For as much as these clothes will sell for, Alex says the 45,000 workers often aren't... And the, and the way to fix that problem is by allowing them to, at the very least, unionize. ...being paid minimum wage. Can I take some pictures? That would be great. Those in charge start asking questions. This is uh, news, news uh, from Canada. And they're doing a story on garment workers. And they want to know if they could record garment workers just working. The classic, you're not allowed to be in here and film. Sweatshop is exactly what that is. The new era of sweatshops. How can it be a new era if, you know, it hasn't stopped? It's just gone more underground. In America's largest apparel hub, many workers are too scared to speak up. Most workers are. Hilda Romero isn't one of them. Alongside the Garment Workers Center, she's fighting hard for a new law that will force big brands to pay up. And that law will inevitably fail. As much as I want that law to go through, it will inevitably fail. I mean, they can't even, like, like, the U.S. can't even, like, cut down its police budget after the BLM protests in 2020. So, like, getting giant corporations to cut cut back and give some of the surplus labor value to the workers, yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, it is. It does suck that it would fail. That it's going to fail. Because these people should be getting paid way, way better than what they are. Yes, e Aparte de eso, muchos ratones, muchas cucarachas. A veces no hay agua para tomar. For Hilda says, for many years, she was never paid what she was owed. No me alcanza, tengo que pagar no la renta is. y para la comida. No, no me queda ni para mi zapato. No me queda ni para un, una mudada. And we discover it's not just American brands she's been making. I'm just looking through your claim for stolen wages, and you've actually... No jobs are paid enough. At least if you're looking underneath a Marxian term and lens. Because all the all the profit that's being generated from the workers, that's just stolen stolen wages. Attached a Canadian brand name here, Sirens. Were you making clothes for this Canadian company? Sí, que si yo no voy a producir Vestido, blusas, y pantalones. Dresses, vestes, and pantalones. Sí. Sirens is the only Canadian brand in Verhilda's claim. It's owned by YM Inc., the company behind many other well-known Canadian stores, such as Stitches, Blue Notes, Urban Kids, just to name a few. Back in Canada, fashion industry insiders tell us we shouldn't be surprised. Los Angeles definitely has a huge sweatshop. How would I go about fixing that if given the chance? <sighs> um, unionization efforts, uh, workplace democracy, actually paying people at, at the very least like $24 an hour, like they deserve to be getting paid. I think that they should be making every single dime that they're putting out there and then you know have the have those that actually work in the factory or or wherever decide to do with what the funds that they generate 
because ultimately a company can run without a CEO. A company cannot run without its workers. Issue. There's a lot of immigrants. There's a lot of undocumented people working there, and that's sort of what they're banking on. Anika Kudlowski and Leah Barrett both teach fashion and say the industry has long sourced its clothes from questionable factories. Can Canadian brands, you know, are, are they able to see their supply chains end to end? Absolutely, if they want it. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Yep. It's impossible, She's right. they say, for factories to pay workers fairly when brands drive down prices. What boggles me is when I was working in the industry and we're getting jeans made for $4 or we're haggling for 0 0.1 of a cent. The people who are making those jeans, what are they getting even of those $4? A fraction. Mm -hmm. We don't understand the true cost of our clothes. And that cost isn't just about money. And that's why if you can, you should always be buying union-made stuff. Fortunately, a lot of people don't have that economic opportunity but and they have to resort to cheap clothes that are often made in sweatshops but that's the unfortunate reality that we live in además las condiciones ahorita en las fábricas que las personas trabajan muy pegados muy pegados en las fábricas y por eso es que a la vez siempre tenemos miedo de trabajar en las fábricas porque es como mi caso mío que yo fui afectada del covid en I mean, yeah, like, I, I remember that COVID, it's crazy bad in the States. Reminds me of a cat. It has its, yeah. Uh-oh. I'll open that. Yeah, no, like, COVID in the States is crazy. I imagine it must still be kind of bad there now. I'm not sure. But like, at the very least, at least we got Serb. Thank, thank God that the NDP said that they would not be pushing anything through that the Liberals wanted unless they gave uh, gave some form of relief to the to the working class. <laughs> The two thousand dollars is better than nothing. Is this the true cost of that made in the USA label? These workers are going in there day in day out, sick with COVID, no ventilation, horrible work conditions, working really hard to provide for their families, um, and somebody is reaping the rewards and not thinking of maybe I should share some of that with the, my workers. It'll never happen. It doesn't have to be this way. It's amazing. It's amazing just the size of it. This is LA's Cytex, and owner Sanjeev Ball is giving us a tour. The first thing they say is, oh, well, we never never realized there was so much that went into making a pair yeah. of jeans, right? And Sanjeev makes a lot, 2,000 pairs a day for some big names you may know. Roughly what it costs you to go from one end of this factory to the other. So an average pair of jeans, it should cost you about $29. To $29, but there yeah. are people in this town who are doing it for less than that. And the way they're doing it is by paying these people less. Oh yeah, and that's a problem. That's a problem. So why do you do it differently? I mean, why do you care? I mean, uh, I mean, we should have a moral compass, right? Every worker here gets paid at least minimum wage. The law posted clearly for everyone to see. A far cry from the job boards we're seeing inside the lobbies of the fashion district where most garment workers in L.A. are employed. So, like, for example, this one, una aguja, means one needle. That's a machine. Spanish. Yeah. These jobs often pay in cents for each part of a garment. So making minimum wage, says Alex, is often impossible. So trimming mm -hmm. is the cheapest paid. Well, how much would you make an hour doing that? Probably like $3 an hour. And, and this is how companies benefit from undocumented labor. They can get away with paying workers less than what they're supposed to be getting compared to the mandatory like minimum wage. But like that's one of the main reasons why people so many people in the West are so afraid, especially in Canada and the US. Why so many people are afraid to talk out, talk up, and, and uh, 
be like, no, we've had enough. We want to unionize. Because they can, if they want to, if they say that they want to unionize, they'll be fired and be replaced by cheaper labor. In in this instance, I guess it would be uh, Mexicans who came across the border. Border. Like three dollars an hour. Three dollars an hour. Trimming is one of Verhilda's jobs. Her pay so egregious, the owner of the factory, which is now shut down, is required to pay her thousands in back wages. YM Inc. is named too and files a response that they simply purchased clothing from the factory and had no knowledge of what was happening inside. They knew what was going on inside. No quieren ser responsable, pues. O yo no sé si tienen miedo presentarse o les da como vergüenza porque por la miseria que pagan. Back in Canada, we tell these ethical shoppers about the allegations against sirens. And we spoke to one woman, didn't matter how hard she worked, she never made even minimum wage. That, what, how do you get away with that? Does how you get away with that? Oh, there's multiple ways of doing that. Biggest ways, again, by not allowing your employees to unionize and th threatening to fire them to keep them silenced so that they don't do so. Why am oh Canadians an explanation for this? They absolutely should know how their products are being made and how the people involved are being treated. There's just no excuse for that. Time to get some answers. I know exactly what sweatshop conditions is all about, and that's how they're treated. There's a new law in California that forces big brands to pay up. But what is Canada that's good. doing? We've been trying to speak with someone about uh, the wages of those who make your clothes. Get more Marketplace. Sign up for our weekly newsletter, cbc.ca slash marketplace. This is your Marketplace. Having seen it with my own eyes, I know exactly what sweatshop conditions is all about, and that's how they're treated. The biggest impact that the workers can make is for all of them to quit, but getting everyone to rally together is hard. Yeah, it is the hard part. Um, well, that's because the, the workers have inherently more power than they think they do. And yes, that that is arguably the biggest way is to have everyone either quit or threaten to quit because then that forces the company's hand to treat their employees a little bit better not much though let's be real and address some of their issues their material issues but unfortunately that will never happen Especially not out here, because Southern Manitoba and Saskatchewan and Alberta don't tend to care about the workers, because all that they do is vote in conservative, and, you know, they don't tend to, they, they're ten, they tend to be blindsided because they think everything's going fine for them. And like a lot of uh, a lot of workers won't are afraid of doing so because again they'll either get fired or you know other nonsense bull crap that they'll face. And plus another thing about that though is you know oftentimes when there are like big worker rallies, it tends to be shut down by the cops. Is there a way to show the working class that they have more power than they actually realize? Um, I mean, COVID was actually, like, sort of a blessing in disguise when it comes to that matter. Because, at least in the States, I don't know about here, but in the States, a lot of low-paid workers, like bartenders, waitresses, waiters, fast food employees realized that they had a lot more power than they actually did and they quit on mass 
forcing a lot of the small business owners to cry to the government, the U.S. government being like, do something about this because we have people quitting en masse. And they're more afraid of becoming workers again than actually like losing profit because they see how much they actually or, or they realize how bad they treat their workers and they don't want to become the part of the working class again. If Canadian brands are exploiting the people making their clothes, who's responsible for stopping it? It's very easy to pass the buck. The people are... We know the U.S. is taking action. There's a new law in California that forces big brands to pay up when any worker in their supply chain isn't paid fair. <laughs> the irony in this is that like, even if they do have to pay up, it's probably going to be, like, $20 or whatever. And not, like, the thousands in wage. It's, it's Whoa. Uh, and not, like, the thousands that they actually owe. was up there but it's kind of ironic to retailers to act ethically but it seems not all of them are and i mean YMA retailers never do some big questions we're going to try one more time to get answers people are in power want to stay in power i mean yeah that's true it's always been true and that's why having a more egalitarian society it would be way better because it works for for the we and not the it's david common calling from cbc marketplace how are you um i'm fine thanks listen we, uh, i think you know we've been trying to speak with someone about uh, the wages of those who make your clothes and i know you've told us that the factories uh, that we've talked to you about are not owned by you so you aren't responsible and you've also said you'll follow the new California law, which would make you responsible. But I actually wanted to ask about all the other workers. What about the workers in the other countries that aren't covered by that I California bill? Um, They're not going to do anything about that. They're only going to do it if they absolutely have to. Because we're just outside. We'd be happy and grateful if somebody could come and talk to us about it. We responded and we'll leave it at that. All right. Thanks. I appreciate it. Bye. So that's as far as we get with YM Inc. I mean, you didn't really push that hard, my guy. God, I hate liberals. YM tells us by email that it buys extremely limited amounts from California, but will still respect the new law and believes all workers should be treated fairly. No, you don't. In the end, the factory, not YM, pays up what Verhilda was owed. They're celebrating this hard-won victory, but she's not done fighting for those who make our clothes. It's a small victory, but... A uh, needed victory. Could your $6,000 loan cost you $20,000? It's turning on. Shocking interest rates. $46.93. $46.99. $49.99. It's almost a license. Oh, is this about payday loans? I keep collecting money. What's really behind the sales pitch? It's very shady. I was really disappointed. Putting lenders to the test. Oh, it is about payday loans. Of our most vulnerable. Oh, this is going to be interesting. This is your marketplace. Hard fought, but you got to start somewhere. I mean, yeah. But that needs to be happening everywhere. But it, the small victories are, are definitely nice. I wish they, they would be a little bit bigger, though. And uh, this all had to be torn off. The cement was, was also rotten. In Barhead, Alberta, Teresa Morton's giving us a tour of her 100-year-old home. So this whole back of the house to here all had to come off. And we had already 
put the new kitchen in, the cabinets, the flooring. <laughs> so we just had to rip it all out. She can laugh now, but it's been a painful reno for Teresa and her husband. Is it fair to call the backyard of your house a money pit? Yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So where, the, where those windows are up there, that is the end of the original house. And all we wanted to do was put this on. That was it. <laughs> the $68,000 reno quote balloons into a $175,000 oh job. Way more than they borrowed from the bank. That, why is that so expensive? Worse. Her husband loses his well-paying oil and gas gig. The bank won't lend more money and they can't cash out their investments. So we didn't know what we were going to do. Then help arrives in the mail. This card came and it said, you've been pre-approved for $20,000. So we just looked at each other and we we're in the car the next day. We were <laughs> pre-approved for $20,000. That seems incredibly fishy to me. And I'm very sad that this, that this woman got duped into the payday loan industry. We were in there. The offer is from a lender called Fairstone Financial, but it comes... Affordable housing is something that has been, has need to be implemented. I mean, just make it free, honestly. That would be more beneficial to everyone than having it affordable, like whatever the fuck that means. But but knowing knowing this country, knowing this country, it's going to be tax add. It's going to be additional taxes on top of the working class, and there's most likely going to be huge discrimination in, in it. Which is one thing that incur that scares me a lot if they actually go through with it, because I mean, look at our healthcare system. People can't. I mean, yeah, sure, it's free, but. You know, there's still incredibly big racism, discrimination, um, rationing in certain parts of the country, you know, stuff like that. But that is one, of, but yes, no, it should definitely be, should definitely be given to everyone and definitely needs to be implemented. Even if it like is bare bones, that's better than nothing, but it would need to be going a lot further than that. Comes at a huge cost. The interest that they charged us was uh, 27.99%. That's more- 27.99%? What the fuck? How was that even legal? I still remember the yoga bubbles that were in Canada last summer. Those things were dumb. I mean, yeah. But the reason why we won't get... The reason why we won't get affordable housing, though, is because landlords will be complaining about it, and you'd have a bunch of, like, conservative dipshits saying it's too expensive. I mean, we do a lot of expensive things, let's be real. Plus, it's not even... It goes mostly to like pay big, big, big businesses and like the little infrastructure that we actually do end up doing, as well as the healthcare system, which, unironically, conservatives don't compl don't cry about. More than seventeen grand in interest over five years on top of the twenty thousand dollars. Seventeen when grand in interest? interest rate like that. Fuck. Did your heart skip a beat? Absolutely. If we had I don't think your heart skipped a beat. I think it stopped. <laughs> I've been so desperate. Um there is no way we would have signed on a dotted line. Now we're heading into the world of high interest lending. Do you want me to turn it on? Going undercover with our marketplace uh -oh. tester, Mena. We're ready? Okay. She's checking out four lenders that offer big cash across the country. And these aren't payday loans. Oh, cash they're not? Money, up to 10,000 bucks. They're, they're not payday loans? I thought that they were. I guess it's... 
I guess it's like the get cash quick stores. We're like still to get approved by Money Mart, up to 15 grand. My mom used to go here. And it was really hard for her to actually get out of the debt that she owed. I I don't know if she still owes them debt or not. But yeah, no, it's not easy to get out of that. It's the same thing with like how credit cards work. You can borrow how much the different interest rates are. Fairstone Financial, where the offer is up to thirty-five thousand dollars. Not a bank. Okay, or a high-risk lender. And at Easy Financial, up to forty-five thousand dollars. We need to select any day that we can take out the payment. And how much average are you looking for? Our tester wants to know the real cost of borrowing six thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm looking at around six thousand. And paying it back every two weeks over three years. How does the process work? Watching on in Toronto is money man Alex Hadataji. He's built three mortgage companies from the ground up, and he's. Oh no. Oh no, they got like one of the worst people to do this. Lend a lot of people a lot of cash. My companies have served over 200,000 Canadians. You deal with this every day? Every day. Okay. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. So he knows interest rates, and that's where we start. That's putting it lightly. What's the interest? 3.94. Sorry, 3.94 for a year? Hmm? 3.94% a year? No. Instant cash places are a scam. In and of them, yeah, they are, but unfortunately, since people aren't getting paid enough money to even you know afford living, sometimes this is their only place that they can actually go and get get money to pay off, say, like their phone bill or their rent, for example. It's either they have to go to one of these instant cash places or they have to go and get into credit card debt. That's just the unfortunate reality. So like monthly. To calculate by monthly and it won't be one point six to three point nine. Doesn't sound too brutal, but Alex sees it otherwise. In my opinion, they're all misleading numbers. Huh. And, you know, uh, they want to make the clients believe that, hey, it's not as bad as you think. Actually, it's worse. Credit card companies so, do the same. 3.9% monthly, but yearly, it's 46.93. 46.93%? Holy fuck, man. Why did that go up so so quickly? You started at like 3.9. Most of our customers do get, unfortunately, 46.9. The interest rates would be about 39.99. Okay. Is it really okay? That's double what most no, credit it's cards not. charge. How would you characterize those? It, it's double than what most credit cards charge. Yeah, and credit cards are bad too. Like their interest rates are bad too. Working don't get paid enough, and these places fix a problem that doesn't have to exist. Absolutely. 100% agree. Type of rates. In my opinion, uh, those are predatory lending. And in my opinion, it should never be allowed in this country. This guy probably does predatory lending too. He probably lends a lot of money out to a lot of poor people or like minority groups like black and brown people See? yet sky high rates up to 60 percent a year are man. legal in canada and well let's make it illegal then money jesus sales rep knew how to explain them 46 percent yeah uh, so that's in the full loan so 46 point the full loan should be like 3.9 three years would cost 46 even that's too high 46 for the full three Okay, so not each year. No, that would be killer. <laughs> <laughs> Uneducated, untrained uh, sales professional 
that either doesn't know what it's talking about or misleading the client completely. When I hear that, I hear that she is expected to pay 46.9% over three years. Absolutely. Is that how interest works? I know it doesn't. Uh, it's an annual interest rate that you charge. If it's 46%, every year you charge them 46%. At that rate, on a $6,000 loan, Money Mart would make more than $5,000 in interest. That's like twice so the amount. Mena would have to pay back more than $11,000. Like, how are poor people expected to to be able to afford that? Like, fuck, it's way much more expensive being poor than having money. Jesus. If you qualify for the maximum interest rate. Same thing at Easy Financial. Is around 5,258 interest. Exorbent, outrageous. It's okay to make money, obviously. But, uh, the rich get richer and the poor get poor. You have to, uh, That's how it's always you know, been. Slaughter your clients and your fellow citizens. Now, to be fair, Alex, the companies will say they've got to charge these sky high rates because these are risky loans to begin with. How does that sit with you? I think these lenders do provide a service. Uh, however, uh, you know, you still could be extremely profitable uh, by charging interest rates of 20 25 or even 30 percent yeah but they want to make more money dog you should know this more than anyone take easy financial for example we find out it borrows at five percent lends out at more than 40 percent on average and pockets the difference they know when you're coming in there that you're there because you cannot go to a traditional lender so I think that it's almost a license to print money for them. She is 100% right about that. The company Teresa used, Fairstone Financial, says it charges its clients high interest rates because they're risky and they may default on their loans. Easy Financial tells us it offers Canadians with bad credit find affordable solutions. Okay, then let's just get rid of the credit system. Why not? Fuck it, why not? If this is the outcome that having a, a credit system is... Then let's just get rid of it. Cash Money tells us it proudly offers credit to... And replace it with, banks, like, at the very least, a UBI. Money Mart, well, this company tells us that employee, they weren't trying to mislead our tester, but they do admit that interest explanation could have been handled better. None of these companies would discuss their business with us on camera. Well, it's probably because it's legal. That's probably why that they won't discuss it on camera with, with you. I mean, come on. Oops. Back on hidden camera. If you want to pay more, you can come into the store and pay more. We're told not to worry about interest. If you want to come in and pay more, just come in the faster. store and pay more. Who wants to pay more than what they have to? Even pay it off early. Anytime. Anytime. Yeah, but they'll, they'll probably hate it. If you want to loan for two, three months, you know, then pay me out in full, that's fine. Because you Remove the credit system and replace it with something that actually helps everyone. Or as many people as possible. No, you should be helping everyone out, regardless of race, stature, class, religion, whatever. And a more egalitarian system would actually help with that a lot. Because it would be built by the communities for the communities. And it would... We wouldn't necessarily need... Like, the only reason why credit systems exist is just for more control. You don't get uh, penalized for it. Most of people take loan like ten thousand dollars, and after two three months they pay it off. How realistic is it for someone to pay off a ten thousand dollar loan in two or three months? It is not. It's Either not very likely. People who borrow this money, either new immigrants or students or young people, or people who have an emergency, and they don't make that type of money, it makes it almost impossible. A few blocks away. There's always that one group that thinks it's a bad thing. I mean, yeah, but you're always going to have pushback on, like, anything, though. 
so it doesn't matter. And if the Liberals were actually serious about doing stuff and helping out the people, they would get a backbone and actually, you know, do something instead of allowing this dog shit nonsense to keep going on. It was sad and funny at the same time. Artist Marty Smith couldn't pay off his Money Mart loan early and says when he went to the store to close the thousand dollar loan, they would I do like this guy's art. It looks looks nice. Let him. You wanted to pay cash. Yeah. You want to finish it off, seal the deal, close it off. Final payment. All done. Then I couldn't do that. You're dealing with a person on another side of a glass wall and she won't take my payment. He says they wouldn't tell him how much he owed and said the payment had to come from his bank. I would have made a 70. That is fishy as hell. Like, this guy, like, there's no shot that this guy has a bank account with, like, anything in it. Yeah, he, he does have really nice art. I think he might be Métis. Dollar payment. I would have gone in and made the hundred and thirteen dollar payment if the woman behind the glass yeah, would he, take it and say it I was think a he's made payment. But they wouldn't take your cash. As far as I could tell, you can't close the loan. And they don't want you to make a final payment because they want to keep collecting money from you. So then this I is mean, the front door. Credit cards do the same thing too. But we're just okay with credit cards doing it. And I guess also here these these as well. These businesses. Seems that's what happens to Teresa too. When her bank offers money at a lower rate, she tries to settle up with Bearstone. Yep, they said there's no penalty for early payment. So we got the exact amount that they told us. We gave them the date we were coming in with the money. But after she and her husband pay by bank draft, they're charged another $180 in interest. And it isn't over yet. Jesus. I went back over all my transactions and I went, oh, look at they took another payment after we paid them already. More than $600 is taken from her bank account. They were unapologetic and um, just... There is no shot that that has to be legal, right? Like, this lady is getting screwed. said, well, we'll get a hold of head office and and ask them to give it back to you. And I said, well, then please stop taking it out. I can't take any more. A month later, Fairstone- And with her husband not having the, the good paying gas and oil job that he had, it's probably gonna make her financial situation a lot worse than what it is. When it pays Teresa back, saying it took that extra payment because it couldn't cancel the automatic withdrawal in time. As for that 108... Is that not legal at all? Um, unfortunately, due to fine print, it might be, but there is no shot that that should be legal. Because that's how a lot of companies get you, is in the fine print. $80 charge, no explanation, and no refund for Teresa. It's very unfortunate is uh, what they've done is really wrong. Yes, but the thing that you have to recognize is that these companies also pay a lot of money towards uh, campaigns to conservatives and liberals, maybe NDP too. So, of course, they're able to get away with it. immoral, irresponsible, and they should be ashamed of themselves. You just feel rushed into signing them, so that it's going to cost an extra 10 to $15 a month. But not when we do the math. I didn't know that. Got a story you think Marketplace should investigate next? Tell us about it on email, Twitter, or Facebook. Yeah, go on Facebook and let them know, guys. This is your marketplace. In Chatham, Ontario, Karen Fornillier's been off work since mid-March, thanks to the COVID pandemic. Tell you like your sister. 
With four kids, no school and no childcare, she's had to stay home while her husband keeps working. And she's had to battle over her $5,000 <laughs> interest loan. Facebook is not the best so place to make a statement. <laughs> People hate when I post on Facebook, let's just say that much. Insurance. Uh, we are writing a response to you in voluntary un unemployment cl claim. Way back before the pandemic, Karen borrowed from Fairstone and got talked into buying loan protection, disability, and life insurance. I actually asked him a couple times, like, is this for real? Like, is it, like, if I do lose my job, is it going to be, like, no hassle or, you know, like, I, will I have to, like, do anything? No, no, it's going to be, like, a quick, you know, just... Let us know your situation, and then you have to kind of maybe show proof that you're not working. Because of the pandemic, many people take that insurance. On hidden camera. So let's say if anything happened at work, we get the insurance to get sick or lay off. The protection plan just comes from the payment. Our tester hears a lot about insurance. We do offer loan protection. We do offer life, disability, and unemployment. We're going to have a loan protection plan. What's in it, Alex, I mean, for the companies to sell these insurance plans? More money. That's it. Flat out more money. Consumers. Money. Uh, they get very generous uh, referral fees most times. If, Called it. Uh, you know, they're charging you $100 per month for the next three years. I would say a good chunk of that's actually coming in as a kickback. At Fairstone, seems insurance just gets rolled into the payment quote. It's an additional cost, right? The, the insurance? Is 68, 75 that I do. So it's already included? It's almost made it sound like it's mandatory. You should take it, and there's no reason for you not to take it. Like it's a package. Yeah, and most customers, they're like, fear factor has been used on right. them. Is right. You could lose your job. You should, we should better take this thing. When COVID hits, Karen says she has to stop working to stay home with the kids, and she stops paying for her loan, counting on insurance to kick in. But... Your claim does not qualify for involuntary unemployment benefits. The insurance won't cover her loan. I was really disappointed because clearly I'm not working, and I had given them um, evidence and you know, records showing that I wasn't working and even my last pay stub. Did I mean, that's because that, you know, Doug Ford, or, or no, I guess it's Rob Ford, is most likely rolling back like a lot of labor protections that she actually has. I mean, it happened here with Pallister as well, and it's still going on with the new broad we have in power now. Disappointing because insurance, it ain't cheap despite what Karen says she was told. He said that it was gonna cost an extra 10 to $15 a month. It's actually $115 per month. Hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. You seem surprised. Over five years, like she'd pay nearly $7,000 on insurance, because guess what? Fairstone charges interest on that too. It's not I mean, why wouldn't they? spelled out in the documents she had to sign on the spot. You just feel rushed into signing them and um, not able to read them. You basically blink and they're gone. When we tell Fairstone about Karen, they say they tried to help her with her claim. They also say that staff walked her through the optional insurance when she bought it and that they never promised she would qualify. Our tester wants to see a contract. Um, actually, just, just one last thing before signing anything. Do you have like any copy that I could look at? No. No? Like that all sorts of people are It happens everywhere. That is... You can show me the contract from now That on. is incredibly like, saucy. I cannot give you someone else's contract, right? Do you have like a copy that I could take a look at? No? Okay, so I apply and I sign the form and the contract and then like when will I find out about the details though? Right, okay. After you sign on the dotted line. Wow. Once you sign on the dotted line. <laughs> sussy. <laughs> He's a sussy little vodka. That they don't want consumers to look at it a day mm -hmm. or two days ahead of time. 
because they would, uh, once they get it, they know there's a good chance that the customer is not going to sign that contract. It's only after you, you sign. Get... Yeah. But, but the irony is, is that I remember going with my mom to Money Mart and they didn't even, like, she had asked for the same thing that they did here and they did not give her a copy at all. Or show or let her look look it over. The money lickety split, no problem. But to see things in writing, that's not possible. Is uh, very non-transparent and very shady. Is in my opinion a uh, extremely wrong and bad way to do business. And uh, it's almost like a loan sharking. I mean, they're just doing business, dog. You you probably do it too. You do loan stuff too, my guy. At Fairstone, our tester can't even get a printout of loan quotes. No? Sorry. Can you write it down so she has some idea? Yeah, at least. I need just to so that I... for a loan or something else. Like... No, we just need to, we need the numbers. It's my first time trying a loan, so I, like, okay. don't know. So this is based on six thousand dollars, thirty nine ninety nine interest rate, yeah. sixty eight seventy five with the insurance. Wow, a sticky pad. So no contract until after you sign on the dotted line, but we did get this very official looking yellow sticky. I actually blame our government hmm. for this. This is beyond crazy or negligent. What? I mean, he just wants to reduce competition with them. So that his small little independent startup or whatever can make more money. I mean, yeah, it is 100% the fault of the government for letting this shit happen. It's the real cost of that $6,000 loan. We do the math. You have to pay extra for that. And who will stand up for Canadians? To make all these institutions accountable. Fighting for answers on your marketplace. Get more Marketplace. Sign up for our weekly newsletter at cbc.ca slash marketplace. Take out the competition. This I mean, your marketplace. I mean, if you want to be real technical about it, it's technically a different, uh, it's a different, it's its own thing. So, but realistically, it's essentially the same. They do the same predatory bullcrap that every every other loan place does. We're visiting high interest lenders. If she wanted to borrow, let's say about six thousand bucks, to figure out the real cost of doing business with them. Pay back over three years, every two weeks. Cash money gives us a payment estimate, but the numbers seem fishy to our expert. Sorry, just one sec. Yeah. Some expert math. Then Alex Hanataji drops a bombshell. Uh, so that's uh, going to take me approximately nine years to pay that money off. And around $20,000. We get another opinion. Nine that years? Confirms. Jesus. It's going take a long time to pay off this debt. When you ask for three years, you ask, hey, if I make those payments you're telling me, I will be free and clear after three years. And that's not the numbers. And that's not accurate on what they represented. Cash Money won't comment about it taking nine years to pay off that $6,000 loan. But the company does say it's very clear about how its minimum payments work and that its customers often pay back their loans early. What do you think, Alex? I mean, I'm actually kind of surprised that if that statement is hypothetically true, that people would be paying it off early. Like, I... I'm very surprised that they would say that, but they're, I think they're just more or less using it for like their own gains. Of all the hidden camera footage that we just showed you. It's tough. Canadians need protections from all across the country and it should be regulated federally. So we want to talk to Christian Freeland on camera. The coronavirus is still Oh no, us. her. As Minister of Finance, she could push to lower that 60% rate she... and regulate the industry. She won't. And she hasn't. Could be blind trust. Maybe. 
When was this uploaded? 2021? Yeah, no, she hasn't. It, I mean, she probably has, like, some stocks or something in there. Or, like, her own one. Well, no, she's liberal. She won't fix any problems. She'll just cry about the aesthetics about it and then not do anything about it. Because the NDP actually gave us a little bit of, or gave Canadians a little bit of support when it came to it, or when it came down to it, by pushing for CERB. Oh, 100% she, she does. There is no shot that she does not. The economic challenge created by the coronavirus is hitting women particularly hard. Her office says she's busy. Oh, God. It's not just hurting women particularly hard, and it has never. It's also hurting minority groups and, you know, a bunch of other people as well. But in Edmonton, New Brunswick, it's hurt everyone. Senator Pirat Ringat wants to talk. It's an abuse of our most vulnerable. Like, nobody's acting on behalf of Canadians in order to uh, make all these uh, uh, these institutions accountable. I'm at I mean, I, I do 100% agree with her, but, like, it's not going to happen. And, like, she should know this more than anyone, considering that she's Indigenous. There, those... Those peaceful protests will inevitably be met, be met with violence. I mean, not too long ago, the I think it was like a month or two ago, indigenous people were fighting for the pipelines still going through their land, and they were met with violence by the RCMP. Advocate Apparently the virus hates the women. I mean, yeah... The liberals will twist it in that way. No interest rate. For years, she's been a lone voice in Parliament. Would be capped at 20% plus the Bank of Canada override, overnight rate. Fighting to bring... Did they kill everyone because of the pipeline? No, I think, there were, I think the RCMP killed two people and brutalized the rest of them. Down the legal interest rate. So... Would it be fair to say this has been like pushing a rock up a I hill? I think it was also what? in Alberta too, so that doesn't help. I would say more an elephant up the hill. An elephant up the hill. Okay. She's not pleased by the hidden camera. It's an abusive process that needs to be curtailed. It needs to be curtailed. That cash money payment plan shocks her. It's going to take you approximately nine years to pay that money off. Well. Nine years and twenty thousand dollars. I I hope all my parliamentary colleagues are listening to this because I'm going to need their support in order to lower that criminal interest rate, create greater transparencies in those those institutions. Do you have enough fight left in? I mean, but that's not going to solve the problem though. On why those people are taking out those loans to begin with. They're taking them out because they need to because they can't. They can't live. And, like, of course people won't be listening to that. Like, are you crazy? The conservatives would, will just be like, there's nothing wrong here. Let the poor die. I'm gonna fight this fight. I was very tired of fighting that fight. But what you just showed me brings back the fighter in me. The senator says the government must act now during this pandemic winter. We haven't seen the dire financial situation that Canadians will be facing come the springtime. I believe that we're going to have a lot of horror stories and uh, Canadians deserve better. They shove away important issues and focus on the less important ones. I mean, yeah, that's what liberals tend to do. And the conservatives always make things worse. I mean, even, like, looking provincially, like, things have gotten a lot worse under conservative 
rolling. It's been awful here. Like the only reason why they put in a row or a hot read at a highway was to get a fucking Christian vote. And like it doesn't matter because everywhere around here votes blue anyways. And like the liberals are the same. They'll just make a big deal out of nothing and then say that they stand make up or make a stance on it and then they don't do anything with it and do the exact opposite. Or do the exact opposite. Okay. Got a story you I mean, I'm, I'm glad that she ignored it. Next? Tell us about it on email, Twitter, or Facebook. Struggling with your mental health during the pandemic? Having trouble finding the help you need online? Ever tried an app? Well, tell us about it. Marketplace at cbc.ca. Nobody has a good situation to any of these problems and shows it. Or solution. Um, I mean, I know what the solution is. But, like, even, like, looking at the NDP, like, they're considered, like, radical. At least by conservatives. Like, they probably honestly think that the NDP is trying to push, like, cultural Marxism or some BS like that. Like, it was just crazy to me that, like, O'Toole was just mask off saying like a bunch of Nazi shit and like I thought the PPC was bad <laughs> lurking in your air if we could see what was in this air at a microscopic level it's a chemical soup surprising yeah. scary air purifiers put to the wait is that is that still here I mean Essentially, all that they're missing is just the swastika. Uh... They they don't want her underneath the the National S Socialist Party of Canada or. National Socialist Nazi Party of Canada because that would turn people away because it has Nazis. And it's a common right-wing tactic to use terms that are inherently good to gain more of the progressive vote. That's how, in some regards, the Nazis were successful in taking some leadership. The test. Airflow and efficiency data important. Are you ready to find out the results? Well, I, would have I did wish that they invited them to for the money. That's really disappointing. I, I did wish that they invited them to the the debate last year though. It would have been really funny listening to Maxine Bernier go like pop off. It would have been really funny. This is your marketplace. The season premiere starts now. Amazon returns. What Amazon doesn't want you to know. I would love to see uh, Amazon don't, doesn't want you to know a lot of things, like, you know, employees pissing in bottles and shitting in bags. Amazon returns end up. We put in hand oil by Amazon. It's like cockroaches. It multiplies. Opening up the secretive world of your returns. That's disgusting. Liquidation. Is what true? That Amazon employees piss in bottles and shitting bags? Yes, the uh, the delivery drivers were doing it because they weren't allowed to get bathroom breaks. Oh man, this is such good content. Is there any... 
any more of these. Sure, let's do that. Why not? Oh, I have to watch that. I mean, it's Amazon. Do you think they care? It doesn't matter if it's a violation of human rights. They want to they want to squash a uh, a unionization unionization effort in. Yeah, they don't. They want to squash a unionization effort in somewhere in the states. I don't remember where it was though. In deals? Or did we just buy a whole truckload of trash? This is returns. This is garbage. That's insane. The true cost of those free returns only on your marketplace. Amazon is a giant and one of the first e-retailers to introduce easy, often free returns. At the expense of their laborers. Where those returns end up? They end up in the garbage. That's that's where they end up. And I have not watched any of this stuff. So I'm not a pre-watch Andy. Like Hassan. <laughs> what is this? All Amazon stuff? <laughs> Amazon won't tell us. They want to keep it a secret. How many customers you got? A lot. A lot. So we're picking up pallets of their returns we bought on a third-party virtual auction. Crockpot, camp toilets. Lots of them are happening. Could be because in stores, only around one in 10 purchases is brought back. But online, that number can jump to 40%. Just take a look inside this warehouse. Shelves filled with unwanted Amazon returns. So we have uh, another warehouse. And what is it mostly? It's all the ends on the well, no. These men don't know marketplace producers are filming on their phones and probably tell us more than they should. We're blurring their faces to protect them. You're saying jam packed. <laughs> there is no way that they, that they don't know who these people are, and they were probably fired later on. Yes, all the time. Yeah. Wow. We're talking about billions of dollars worth of merchandise being sent back across North America. But where does it all go? It's the hidden side of online shopping that it, most of us don't know much about. It goes in the sure. trash, my guy. Where else does We're it go? We're to find out the true costs of free returns. Okay, so they're probably not going to elaborate on this at all, but another cost of it is, you know, greenhouse emissions. Oh, yeah, no, like... Whenever someone gets caught filming anything, both, like, if it's an employee filming something, they'll get fired from it, as well as the peop the other person doing it as well. Yeah, it's it's most likely going to be, like, this video is most likely going to be, like, you know, it's all, like, going into the trash and blah, blah, blah. Whilst it's not, they're not going to be covering the labor aspect of it, the greenhouse emissions aspect of it. And a whole bunch of other crap like that. All right, let's open these up. We buy these on Amazon ourselves. The boots. Look at that. Oh, those are nice boots. We got the uh, ladies' backpacks here. I got overalls. We got lots of pockets. Nice. There's ladies, the ladies have diapers, way better backpacks than us guys. Lots of blocks too. Okay, are we ready? Let's get these trackers in. All Amazon purchases, all going right back. And all with these GPS devices hidden inside. How would this get through customs? Like, that's the one thing I want to know. Like, especially with, like, the 9-11 the stuff, like, there is no way that this stuff is not being checked. And if anything's fishy, they're going to probably either like destroy it or something uh canada wide like if it's if it's from canada to somewhere else in canada i don't think so but i know internationally they definitely do because whenever i order something either from like the states or japan or somewhere else it definitely gets checked i'm gonna put the tracker in the toe of the boots 
and it just fits right in there. We're gonna tuck the tracker in here. I'm gonna put the tracker in the overalls. Okay, that looks good. That looks good, right? I'm gonna actually stick it to a block. <laughs> They're doing such a bad job about this. It's, it's actually kind of funny. <laughs> Ah, yes, they won't recognize this giant plastic bag stuck to one of these blocks inside of a children's, children's toy uh, thing. And then I'm going to throw some blocks around it. This is great. Hey there, guys. We team up with the Basil Action Network. All right, guys, we want to check to make sure that you have a signal for each of the trackers. So... Definitely. It's a Seattle-based environmental group specializing in tracking waste around the globe. The tracker inside and taped down. Can you let me know if it is pinging? I'm looking at our portal back here. That handbag is live and pinging. These devices become our guide into the secretive side of e-commerce. I'm going to hit the tracker now. Yeah, it's right at the CBC. Next, send them back. It couldn't be easier. Print the shipping label. Drop off all the returns, trackers inside. And we're not the only ones sending stuff back. Okay, Eddie, Eddie, you wanna hold the balloon? Yeah. You wanna hold this? Oh my, they're sending Meet a lot of Majita stuff back. El Tamani and her sister, Sarah. Okay, let's see the baby duck. Hi there. They're big Amazon shoppers. Tell me just about some of the things you've got here. Sure. Um, so I've purchased a juicer. Okay. Um, a grill for the summer time. Yep. Um, also the star frit pump and slice. You got uh, an alligator? The alligator. I have a friend who's obsessed with alligators. What do you like most about Amazon? If any of my friends are obsessed with alligators, I think that's that's just when I end that friendship. Because then they'll be even weirder than me. And apparently, like, I'm a furry or some nonsense. Um, I personally love the fact that I can price match. There's also endless options. So I like that everything's centralized. I don't um, hate them. It's just weird to be obsessed with them. I love the fact that their return is so seamless. They'll send you by email, you know, the, the return label, and then you just send it off in case you're, you're not. Um, Easy peasy. Yeah, so it's, it's, I love it. Majita is helping us with our test. I'm gonna put this tracker into the box, put the screws back in. Take it back, let's see where it goes. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. See ya. Within hours of dropping the returns off at our local post offices, they're on the move, all passing through this Canada Post facility in Mississauga, Ontario. A lot of then, packages go through there. This Your destination is on the right. An unexpected turn. Should we just walk around a little bit? Yeah. We know we have... What would I consider oppressed? Oh, obsessed. Never mind. I can't read. Um... You know, it... Kind of like me, but like when it comes to Amiibo. The blocks here. What else is here? I think the blocks and the boots. Turns out it's where Canada Post processes returns. So we asked them how many Amazon packages they get a day. Canada Post won't tell us, saying they can't share client info. So it's probably we a lot. Digging. Our track packages make their way to this Amazon warehouse west of Toronto. But most don't stay long. They're spreading. Just like Amazon itself, with massive warehouses opening across Ontario. With that enormous growth comes an enormous environmental cost. Amazon admitted in 2019 it spews out as much carbon dioxide as a small country. So last year, a pledge from CEO Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Bezos will take care of everything. Today, we are announcing 
the Climate Pledge. Amazon becomes the first signatory to the Climate Pledge. Can I get some papayas in chat? <laughs> we're asking whether returns are included in that pledge. Online returns are not just an Amazon problem, but they are the biggest e-retailer in Canada. So we ask them repeatedly, what happens to all those returns? They won't tell us, but they do say that they are committed to the environment and also to reducing waste. No, no, they're not. They're not. Ecoblogger Mira Jane would like to see Amazon say more. They, they won't say more though. Amazon is a multi-billion corporation and I think they have a lot of clout to do good, but I'm not sure that they're using what what kind of clout do they have to do good? They can't even give their employees like actual bathroom breaks. So what kind of good do you think that they're gonna that they're gonna do? Ah uh, yes. I mean this she'll probably think that you know. I don't know some liberal bullcrap being like, oh, they have. Pot potential to be really good by doing, I don't know, planting a tree or some stuff. I mean, no, they do have other options, but they they won't say anything about it though, because it wouldn't make it wouldn't make sense for them to do so. Using their power and their influence in the right way right now, uh, I expect them to be conscious of their carbon footprint. What do you guys feel like doing? Painting. Painting? All right. Mira is a mom of two, a teacher, and tries to live waste-free. What do you got going on there, Anz? Rainbow. She worries about the impact online shopping has on the environment and wants to know more. I would love to see where Amazon returns end up. I think accountability and, and being open as a business is so important, especially as a conscious consumer. And so for me to know that they're... If you were a conscious consumer, consumer, you would not be buying from Amazon straight up. You just wouldn't. I mean, even to find out that they were not going in the right place, that would help me make my decisions a lot more effectively. From this one warehouse, most of the returns hit the road, quickly adding up kilometers and carbon emissions. Remember those overalls we return? They crisscross the greater Toronto area. After 170 kilometers, they stop here. I'm actually kind of surprised that they we said something about carbon emissions. Facility. Electronics recycling and product destruction? But there was I mean, yeah. I called it. If they were actually, like, conscious consumers, then they should understand that a lot of the products that they buy aren't like ethically made unless it's under like a union or a workers co-op for example and if they were conscious if they were a conscious consumer they would be buying from somewhere like that oh where would i buy from um not amazon i don't buy from them anyways so there's nothing wrong with the overalls so why are they here? So Etsy would be a good example. Um, I don't know, maybe. Got the mug here. Isn't like Etsy like a boomer thing though? The mug hitting camera is on. We're gonna turn this thing on. Yeah, then I don't know. Going in undercover to find out. That's a nice clear shot. Our cameraman's filming from inside his van, too. I'm Ty, nice to meet you. We're posing as potential clients with pallets of Amazon returns. So, is that what you guys have dealt with before? Tons, tons of it, tons of Amazon. We're not showing this manager's face because she's just doing her job. We're not the only ones. We couldn't handle all of Amazon. Right. There's no way. It is so, it's like cockroaches. It multiplies. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. It's different. It comes and goes. We probably minimum get a tractor trailer full a week. Minimum. But up to three to five. 
three to five trailer fulls of Amazon products or Amazon returns. That's crazy for me. That seems kind of high. What's that? Three to five truckloads a week? She gives us a tour and shows us the industrial size shredders inside. So coffee makers will go on a shred. Toys as long as the batteries are taken out, it'll go on shred too. After shredding, she says most gets recycled, but admits not all. Some of it will go into landfill. The oh, so one thing I don't know if you guys know about or not, but like a lot of stuff that says it's recyclable is not recyclable. And then they and then people like this lady have to chuck it in the trash. It's ridiculous because like even stuff like that has like pizza grease or something like that on it can't be recycled either. Uh, aluminum cans can, but I'm referring more to like plastics. Only like there's a recycling sign on your uh, on a lot of your plastic stuff, and. Only the uh, only the stuff that is either marked with a one or a two could be recycled. Everything else they can't recycle because it's made up of different plastics or it's just other stuff that they can't use. Hundred percent, like nothing, not nothing. One hundred percent goes uh, into recycling. You just, it just is not possible. Inside those walls is a place that takes truckloads of Amazon returns every wow. single week, and they have a massive industrial shredder in there. Why? Our recycling system, not only in Canada, but around the world, is extremely, extremely broken. I mean, she's only saying that because China refused to take in a bunch of our recycling stuff. And then when they said, no, we're not taking your recycling anymore, they're uh everywhere else is boned because you know nowhere else actually has the infrastructure to actually deal with recycling properly so when china said no we're not taking it anymore only so much you can do recycling is like our last resort when we think about how we want to dispose of items. Uh, we could resell, we could re-gift, we could re-home somehow. Um. She is completely right about this. There is a reason why the motto for recycling is reduce, reuse, recycle, and in that order. You should always be reducing your consumption of uh, recyclable goods, especially when it comes to plastics. Reusing things like reusable containers or something like that. And then recycling the stuff that you absolutely have to. The problem, though, is with our neoliber neoliberal society is we put so much emphasis on recycling that we completely ignore the other two and don't even do a good job on the one we actually promote. Um, reuse it somehow. That would be, like, way preferable to recycling. Amazon says the overalls were sent to the e-waste facility by mistake. One that led us here. They, they weren't set there by mistake. They were sent there on purpose to be destroyed. How do we fix the recycling system? Um, by putting funds in the right place, have allowing those who actually work in the in the facilities actually having a say on what goes on in the workplace, building better f facilities and upgrading a lot of things. That need to be upgraded 
as well as putting, say, a ban on single-use plastics or making sure that everything has to be either recyclable or what the UK is doing, like <clears throat> having biode biodegradable uh, materials on like your foods or your or other goods like that to uncover how some amazon returns are ending up recycled or destroyed but those overalls are still on the move this is returns this is garbage these online companies they can't keep up with the returns the true cost of those free returns continues on your marketplace Get more Marketplace. Sign up for our weekly newsletter, cbc.ca slash marketplace. This is your Marketplace. We're tracking what Amazon does with your returns. I got overalls. Including a perfectly good pair of overalls that we sent back. That looks good. That looks good, right? We follow them to this facility and learn truckloads of Amazon returns end up here to be recycled or destroyed. We do product destruction. But unlike all those truckloads of returns, our overalls keep moving and the tracker shoots us a signal from the road. Since we sent them back to Amazon, the overalls make five stops and travel over 200 kilometers to get here. I thought they were going green. What gives Amazon? See anything there? You can't really see anything through here. All right, let me take a look over the door. <laughs> well, it's kind of like... A what the heck are they doing? <laughs> I mean, it never does. The, there's actually a really good video by Urging and Climate that talks about, like, companies going green and... Um, and net zero emissions. But what is this guy doing, though? He is completely loiter loitering and, like, maybe trying to attempt burglary. A warehouse. There's all sorts of Phillips head shavers. There's just boxes and boxes of all sorts of things. It almost looks like a liquidator. But liquidators actually sell that stuff, though, that people don't want. And, like, are we really surprised that this is happening? Turns out a lot of online returns, including Amazon's, end up at liquidators. Roy. David, how are you? Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. So, I got three pallets in here. You willing to take a look at it for me? <laughs> Dad, take a look. Yeah, you got a little more experience at it. Roy Dernbeck's been in the liquidation business for over 25 years, with several stores across the country. Why don't we put these three out here? Okay. And we'll see what you got. All right, let's do it. Remember, those pallets of Amazon returns we bought from a liquidator? We're about to find out what they I mean, they it's really not surprising want. to me. They put the best stuff on the outside. So any good big brand names like Weber or whatever, the good stuff's going to be all on the outside. Okay, I I will give them credit for that though. That's actually kind of smart because then this way can, they can get rid of a, a bunch of crap too. But then that just makes the problem continue though, because you're still getting you're still trying to get rid of that crap. So yeah. when you start digging in the middle, that's where you're going to throw in the rest of the junk. When you see this, yeah, right now, what do you think? This is returns. This is garbage. This is stuff companies, especially online, these online companies, they can't keep up with the returns. So they just find fast ways to sell it by the skid, the truck load, trailer load, whatever. You seeing more of this? <laughs> trailers and trailers every day. Okay, let's crack it open, see what we got. Let's see what you got. We've got two piles going. Things he can sell again and things he would lose or toss out. To use food product, I would get rid of it. Or okay, what about this? Toys, toys are always easy to sell. It says defective, then says. just throw it out because now we already know it doesn't work. Foldable burlap storage cubes. Storage cubes, everybody's always trying to organize. 
Here, we got, an, uh, we got a guitar, man. Let's see what kind of guitar we got. Um, Strings are broken, and so is the guitar. Roy shows us that at least a third of these Amazon returns that ended up in liquidation, he thinks, would probably be tossed in the garbage. When you think about the volume of stuff you've seen over your career, mm -hmm. like a lot of this stuff comes from Amazon. It's returns from Amazon. Yeah. How much is that just ending up in the dumpster? I, 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 I'm scared to think about how much. It's a lot. Because that's what people do. If it's not going to be working for them, why go through all the hassle just to return something? I think that um, maybe not that high, but it's definitely a lot. much stuff is going back to the landfills because it's just it's endless amounts of this stuff every day you're actually trying to filter some of it and give it a new life i do i try not to send it to a landfill if it's something that's got some value i can save somebody some money i'll try and resell it but, but can you save everything no obviously look look how much trash we got out of your three skids the irony in this is that all this stuff probably is, uh, has some form of planned obsolescence. All this trash shows that even returns Amazon sends to liquidation for a new life. Yeah, 95% is high. Up as garbage. While there are no Canadian stats, American experts estimate 5 billion pounds of returns from all retailers and I mean 5 billion pounds, but you're also referring to the states those the states consumes a lot and of course when you have massive consumption it's going to lead to massive waste as well i imagine that since we have a smaller population it's probably a little bit lower end up in u.s landfills every year hey, David. how are you good how are you mira's tagging along as we see where one of our returns ended up we're eager to show you something here no, i'm worried so i'm thinking that this is where i mean the but that doesn't really matter Amazon though returns get stored or because higher density populations will have more waste that's just how it is so somewhere like say california or texas will have more waste than somewhere like ohio or utah or like wyoming Not quite, but she's about to find out. And Majita joins us too. Remember, she's a big Amazon shopper. Mira, not so much. So we bought all these things on Amazon, including a bag just like this. You like it? It's awesome. It's awesome. Okay, so we returned it. Totally good condition. And we want to show you where it ended up. Okay. All right. I'm not thinking it's anything good. I just truly have so many questions. It does make you rethink. I don't know why they're trying to push so much that a lot of the Amazon returns either get like recycled or given to liquidation. I don't I don't understand that. I mean we know that it ends up in the dumpster. Think shopping at Amazon. Ultimately, it's the consumer who's actually paying for that. Digging for answers on your marketplace. Do you have a story you think Marketplace should investigate next? Tell us all about it on email, Twitter, and Facebook. This is your Marketplace. We're tracking Amazon returns, and we're about to reveal where the retail giant sent a brand new bag like this one. I love it. Would you buy this? I for sure would. Like you would buy it from me right now? Of course. Okay, so we took one just like this, in just as good condition, and returned it to Amazon. And where do you think Amazon sent it? I would love to guess right here. That garbage location across the street. I called it. <laughs> I, I mean, I called it from the start, but I still... Oh, man. That's insane. Oh it's God. not insane. How are you surprised by not this? Happy. You're not happy. I'm not happy. I'm, I'm just truly shocked by that because um, 
it's in perfect condition. Um, so for it to end up in a waste management facility, um, to me is truly shocking. But, but it's cheaper to throw it out than repackage it and resell it. That's why they throw it out. Which, yeah, no, it's definitely not cool that they do that, but like, it's what they do. Because like I said, I would want that bag. What's uh, upsetting about that is that if I had known that they were going to the garbage anyways. All right, see you later. I would just resell that, right? Or donate it or let someone else have use of it. Yeah, exactly. And my, my question too is why are they offering uh, returns for free if this is what's happening? All great questions. Uh, you wanna know why? Because it keeps customers coming back. That's why they do it. Unfortunately, we have some recyclables that should not be in here. And we take them to Professor Kevin Lyons at Rutgers University in New Jersey. He spends as much time in the landfill as the classroom. He's got a PhD in supply chain environmental management. So a backpack just like this one, we returned it. Amazon tossed it in the garbage. What do you think about that? That's disappointing. They did a, uh, probably, and I don't know this for a fact, obviously, but some kind of cost of value uh, analysis of that and found out, you know what, this is gonna cost us more uh, to try to sell it again than just to toss it in the trash. I called literally everything that they were going to say in this video. Man, they are so predictable. So that's unfortunate. I think most folks would be uh, outraged. When you look at things that could have been uh, utilized by others who might be in need, it absolutely disturbs me. And I think a lot of other consumers would be very disappointed as well. When we ask Amazon why the bag was tossed, they say it arrived damaged and couldn't be resold. So in this case, who decided it couldn't be resold? Amazon did. We dig up Amazon Canada's business agreement with those who sell on the site. Sellers are only given two options when a customer returns a product, either pay to ship it back or pay Amazon to dispose of it by selling, recycling, donating, or destroying it. And most of it's destroyed. An investigation in France found Amazon throwing out hundreds of thousands of unsold goods and returns. Shortly after, Amazon starts a new donations program. I mean, it wasn't just France though, right? It was also UK as well. At least I think it, there was some stuff going on in the UK about it as well for their third party sellers. There's one in the US. I mean that's the corporate the model. Too. But none. There's not rage and they do. The environment is actually something like that. a deep toll on it. And I know that folks are going to say, "Oh, it's just one item." But if you think about the uh, the millions and sometimes billions of transactions that are happening on this space, the impact is uh, is incredible. Do you think you and the consumers of Amazon are owed an explanation by the company? Yeah, I, yeah, I would say 100% we're owed an explanation. They won't give one, though. Our trackers show some returns are still inside Amazon. Others, the blocks, printer, and boots, have moved to new homes. But in doing so, cover more than 5,000 kilometers. I just truly have so many questions for everybody at that company. It does make you rethink shopping at Amazon. Again, I'm truly shocked. I don't know what to say. I mean, employees pissing in bottles isn't enough to make you reconsider that. And this is like the final straw. We want answers from Amazon too, and again ask for an on-camera interview. They decline and say in a statement that our reporting is inconsistent with their findings. They say the majority of Amazon returns are resold, recycled, or donated, though they do acknowledge some ends up in the garbage. Exactly. How much? They won't tell us that. Most of it. What colors do you guys want? I want green and black. And, and brown, mm -hmm. please. Thank you. Mira is doing her part and wants Amazon to do theirs too. What about the rest of us? Well, you can find some perfectly good returns on Amazon's warehouse deals site. And did you know that clothing is the most likely type of return to end up tossed? Ultimately, I mean, is that it all buy less 
it, it, return less. Is that really surprising, I though? I expect Amazon to listen to me when I have a concern or a desire. They're a huge company. They have a lot of capability of making change. No, they don't. They, they, they don't. We're wiring up. We have as many cameras as possible to get the lowdown on appliance repairs. It's 200 to work on the machine, 80 computers. Okay. But they will never tell but you. But they didn't tell me that. Because if they tell you it's 280, nobody's going to come. Well, the easy fix come with a huge cost. In total, she paid just under $700. Wow. There's no need to replace this problem. In the men's bathroom, we'd ran out of soap in early May. The dirty truth about the biggest chains. Excuse me. There's no soap in the bathroom. I mean, it's not. It's probably nothing new. Um. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to get ready for bed now. Thanks for everyone stopping by and coming to hang out. It was fun doing this. I'm going to have to do more of this in the... I have to do more of this for sure. Later.